Welcome to our latest video, which aims to recap chemical equilibria and Le Chatelier's principle. This video is suitable for A-level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should have an improved understanding of the meaning of the terms reversible reaction and dynamic equilibrium. You should also be able to explain Le Chatelier's principle and use it to deduce the effects of changing the temperature, concentration and pressure on the position of equilibrium. Now at GCSE, AS and A-level, we've seen many reactions are reversible, i.e. they take place in either direction, both forwards and backwards. An example of a reversible reaction is shown below. We have hydrogen reacting with chlorine to form hydrogen chloride gas. And reversible reactions are identified by the symbol here on this slide. And when hydrogen reacts with chlorine, we form hydrogen chloride and this is the forward reaction and during this reaction the concentrations of the reactants will initially decrease and as soon as hydrogen chloride is formed it will split up and the reactants hydrogen and chlorine reform. Now in a reversible reaction both the forward and reverse reactions continue indefinitely however there comes a point when there is no further observable change where nothing seems to happen to the unaided eye. Now at that point, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction. And it's said to be in equilibrium. Now equilibrium means balance. So these two graphs show what's happening in this process. So the top graph shows what happens to the rates of the forward reaction and the backward reaction. So at the start, we have a forward reaction taking place. And over time, the rate of the forward reaction begins to slow as reactants are forming products and the concentration of the reactant molecules are decreasing. And as this takes place, the rate of the backward reaction increases because you're getting more and more products being formed and these products react, the molecules collide, and form the reactants again. Now at chemical equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backwards reaction. And when this point is reached, the reactant concentrations and the product concentrations remain fixed. And that's what's shown here in the second graph. Now, chemical equilibrium is sometimes called dynamic equilibrium since the two opposing processes are taking place at equal rates. So you have to remember that when defining either the term chemical equilibrium or dynamic equilibrium, all you have to say is it's when the forward reaction rate is equal to the backward reaction rate. And at that point, the concentration of reactants and products will remain fixed. Now examples of reversible reactions that we've come across at GCSE, AS and A-level chemistry include the following. So the first example is nitrogen reacting with hydrogen to form ammonia. And you would have come across this at GCSE when you studied the harbour process. Now the second reversible reaction here is sulfur dioxide reacting with oxygen and once again you would have come across this at GCSE when you studied the contact process the manufacture of sulfuric acid. Now in organic chemistry this year you studied the reaction of a carboxylic acid in an alcohol to form an ester and this is also an example of a reversible reaction. Now the final reaction here is a reaction that we've studied in Unit 3 as part of the WJC syllabus and it's a reaction of copper 2 plus ions with concentrated hydrochloric acid and when copper 2 plus ions react with concentrated hydrochloric acid you get the following reaction. The copper 2 plus ions react with 4Cl minus ions to form a new complex which is tetrahedral in shape CuCl42- and this is a yellow stroke green complex and you get six water molecules 
and all four reactions here are reversible and therefore if you carry out these reactions you come to a point where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction and the reaction is said to have reached chemical or dynamic equilibrium. Now at AS level we learnt that if we change the conditions of a chemical reaction in equilibrium the equilibrium is also changed. For example, changing the concentration of just one substance will change the concentrations of all the other substances present. And the proportion of products to reactants in an equilibrium mixture is known as the position of equilibrium. Now, in 1884, Le Chatelier observed the response of equilibrium systems to changes in concentration, pressure and temperature. And his observations led to Le Chatelier's principle. And it's Le Chatelier's principle that tells us what happens to the position of the equilibrium if we change the conditions. Now Le Chatelier's principle states that if a constraint is put on a chemical equilibrium, i.e. it's subjected to a change, the position of equilibrium shifts to remove that constraint. In other words, to minimise the effect of that change. Now, in the next part of this video, we're going to look at some practice questions centred around the topic of equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle. So here's our first practice question. Read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So this first question is asking you to explain the term dynamic equilibrium. Now, a dynamic equilibrium is where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction. And if you said that, you get one mark. Now, it's important to stress here that the term dynamic equilibrium means exactly the same as the term chemical equilibrium. Now, the second question here is asking you to explain how you would tell from the properties of the system that equilibrium has been reached. Now, if the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction, at equilibrium, the concentration of reactants and products remain fixed. And that's why it appears that nothing is happening, that there's no observable change taking place. But this is just because the concentration of reactants and products are fixed. They remain constant at equilibrium. So if you said that, you get one mark. So here's our next practice question. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answer. So this question is asking you what happens to the yield of ammonia if you decrease the temperature in this reaction. So the reaction is nitrogen plus hydrogen forming ammonia and it's exothermic. And if it didn't tell me this in the question, I can see it's exothermic because delta H is equal to minus 92 kilojoules per mole. So it means that the forward reaction gives out heat. And if the forward reaction gives out heat, the backward reaction takes in heat. The backward reaction is endothermic. Now the question is asking you what happens to the yield of ammonia in this reaction when you decrease the temperature. Now Le Chatelier's principle tells you that if you put a constraint on a chemical equilibrium, the equilibrium shifts to remove that constraint, to minimise the change that you subjected it to. Now, if you decrease the temperature, the equilibrium will shift to the side that opposes this, the side that gives out heat. And the side that gives out heat, to oppose the change that we've subjected the equilibrium to, will be the right-hand side. So if you decrease the temperature, the equilibrium shifts to the side that gives out heat, and this is the right hand side. And if the equilibrium shifts to the right hand side, 
the yield of ammonia will increase. So you get one mark here for the idea that the equilibrium shifts to the side that gives out heat, the exothermic side. One mark if you correctly identified this as the right hand side. And one mark if you said that this results in the yield of ammonia increasing. So this is a three mark question. So here's our next practice question. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answer. So this question talks about dissolving hydrated copper two sulfate crystals in water, which gives a blue solution due to the presence of CuH2O6 two plus. And then when concentrated hydrochloric acid is added to a solution of the copper two sulfate, the following equilibrium is established. Now, the question is asking what happens when more concentrated hydrochloric acid is added to the blue solution? Now, if you increase the amount of concentrated hydrochloric acid here, so you increase the concentration, you're increasing the concentration of Cl- ions that are present. And when you increase the concentration of Cl- ions present, the equilibrium shifts to the side that opposes that change. It shifts to the side that removes Cl- ions. And the forward reaction removes Cl- ions by converting them to CuCl4 2- and 6H2O. So if you increase the concentration of Cl- ions here, the equilibrium shifts to decrease the concentration of Cl- ions, and therefore this shifts to the right hand side. Now, it's asking you to explain what happens, so you need to include the observation as well. And if the equilibrium shifts to the right-hand side, you will see a yellow-green solution forming. So there's three marks here. One mark for the idea that the equilibrium shifts to the side that decreases the concentration of Cl- ions. One mark if you identified this as the right-hand side. And one mark if you identified correctly that you would see a yellow green color forming. So here's our fourth practice question. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answer. So this question is all about the oxidation of ammonia to form nitrogen oxide. And this reaction is important in the manufacture of nitric acid. And the question says to explain in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, the change in equilibrium yield of nitrogen oxide caused by increasing the pressure at constant temperature. Now, if you increase the pressure of an equilibrium system, the equilibrium shifts to the side that would reduce that pressure. Now, there's 9 moles of gas on the left-hand side and 10 moles of gas on the right-hand side. So if you increase the pressure at constant temperature, the equilibrium shifts to the side that would reduce pressure, which would be the side of the lowest number of moles of gas, because pressure is caused by gas molecules hitting the walls of the container that they're in. So if you want to reduce the pressure, the equilibrium needs to shift to the side of lowest number of moles of gas. So increasing the pressure causes the equilibrium to shift to the side of lowest number of moles of gas. Now that will be the left hand side because there's 9 moles of gas on the left and 10 moles of gas on the right. So the equilibrium shifts to the side of lowest number of moles of gas, which is the left hand side. And it does this to reduce the pressure. And if the equilibrium shifts to the left-hand side, the yield of nitrogen oxide decreases. So there's three marks for this question. One mark if you correctly identify that the equilibrium would shift to the side of lowest number of moles of gas. One mark if you correctly identify that that would be the left-hand side. And one mark if you said that as a consequence of this, the yield of nitrogen oxide decreases. So here's our last practice question. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, 
have a go at it, and then we go for the answers. Now this question is all about the reaction of carbon monoxide and steam to form carbon dioxide and hydrogen. And the first part of this question says, state and explain the effect, if any, of increasing pressure on the yield of hydrogen gas produced at equilibrium. Now, if you increase the pressure on an equilibrium system, the equilibrium shifts to reduce that pressure. In other words, it shifts to the side of lowest number of moles of gas. Now, if you increase the pressure on this system, there are two moles of gas on the left-hand side and two moles of gas on the right hand side of the equation. So therefore increasing the pressure would have no effect here because you have the same number of moles of gas on either side of the equation. Now there's two marks for this first part of the question. If you correctly identify that there would be no effect if you increase the pressure, you get one mark. And if you explain that there's no effect because the number of moles of gas on either side of this equation is equal, you get the second mark. So when answering these sorts of questions, you just have to remember that increasing the pressure shifts the equilibrium to the side of lowest number of moles of gas. However, in this case, the moles of gas on either side of the equation are the same, and that's why there's no effect. Now, for the second part of this question, it's asking you to state and explain the effect, if any, of increasing temperature on the yield of hydrogen gas produced at equilibrium. Now, the forward reaction here is exothermic, and I know this because delta H is negative. So it tells me that the forward reaction gives out heat. Now, if the forward reaction gives out heat, the backward reaction must be endothermic and take in heat. Now, this question is asking you to state and explain the effect, if any, of increasing the temperature on the yield of hydrogen gas produced. Now, if you increase the temperature, the equilibrium shifts to the side that takes in this heat, the endothermic side, and this would be the left-hand side, and as a consequence of this, the yield of hydrogen would decrease. So this is worth two marks. If you said the equilibrium would shift to the left-hand side, the endothermic side, you get one mark, and if you said that this would cause the yield of hydrogen to decrease, you get the second mark. Now this last question says, this reaction uses a catalyst based on iron oxide. State the effect of using a catalyst on the position of equilibrium. Now at AS level, you should have learned that a catalyst has no effect on the position of equilibrium because it speeds up the forward and backward reactions equally. Now although a catalyst has no effect on the position of an equilibrium, a catalyst does reduce the amount of time it takes for the equilibrium to form because it's speeding up the forward and backward reactions equally. So there's one mark here if you said a catalyst has no effect on the position of equilibrium. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now have an improved understanding of the meaning of the terms reversible reaction and dynamic equilibrium. And you should also be able to explain Le Chatelier's principle and use it to deduce the effects of changing the temperature, concentration and pressure on the position of equilibrium. So that concludes this video lesson. So please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. O Chemistry, which has lots of GCSE, AS and A-level videos. And our Twitter site, at Radichemistry.